How y'all doing, everybody? This is New Year's Day, January 1st, 2015, and I want to address this Farrakhan L. Ron Hubbard thing. All right? I'll make this real swift and quick. Now, some people think that I'm hard on that shit. You know what I mean? I understand this, that he's a man, I'm a man, you men. We susceptible to mistakes. Understand all that. But when you're in a certain position that carries a responsibility that he has, being the leader of a nation that comprises of hundreds of thousands of people, if not a million, all right, members of the Nation of Islam, okay, you have a certain responsibility. Now, you formed an alliance, a partnership, a religious and spiritual partnership, but a partnership nonetheless. So you're talking about a social partnership? You're talking about a religious partnership? You're talking about an ally? You know, when you partner with somebody, you're allies. So now, my soldiers are your soldiers. You understand what I'm saying? To a certain extent, my ministry is now, you know, your ministry. Because what you say and do, your actions and inactions can impact my people. My people that I'm responsible for. So now, he done hooked up with the white boy, L. Ron Hubbard. Now, if every Tom, Dick, and Harpo know that L. Ron Hubbard was a, uh, he was a student of Aleister Crowley. Okay? And Aleister Crowley was known as he gave himself the name the beast. He was called the most wickedest man in the world. You know what I mean? He was a self-proclaimed uh, devotee of Lucifer. All right? He started a Masonic organization. He, he belonged to about five different Masonic organizations, but his goal, his personal goal and intent was always to be the head of his own Masonic uh, organization. And he accomplished that with the OTO. And that stands for the Orientus or the Orientus Templi Order or the Order uh, Templi Orientalis. Whatever you know, they say the shit. I've heard it pronounced either way. Wh how you want to put, you know, which which you want to make the first O and the last O, whether it's going to be Order or Orientus. All right. So it's it's the Orientus uh, Templi Order or it's the Order Templi Orientus. All right. So, Templar just simply means temple in, it, in the case of the OTO. It doesn't mean, it doesn't have any uh, connections, whether they're philosophical or uh, traditional uh, connections to the Knights Templar. It doesn't have that. In, in the case of the OTO, the Templar just simply stands for temple. Okay? It's the temple of the Orient order, basically. It's Latin, all right? So that's what I be telling y'all about understanding language, okay? So it's 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 the, it's the Orient Temple Order, you know what I mean? Or Temple of the Orient Order. That's basically it if, when you translate the shit. All right. So again, when you form allies, now my soldiers are your soldiers, and your actions or inactions will will will, will can cause me to have to you know put my people at risk. You understand what I'm saying? When you fuck up. I'm going to be held just as accountable and my followers will be held just as accountable because they follow me. And see, I need you brothers to understand that shit. This ain't just a partnership between Farrakhan and, and L. Ron Hubbard. It's not just that. You understand? It's, it's Farrakhan and everything that Farrakhan uh, is responsible for and represent. So when I tell y'all that this, this, this ally this, this this partnership goes against the back page of the, of, of the final call. You know what I mean? Which simply states, you know what I'm saying, the direction of the nation. You know, what the Muslims want and what the Muslims believe. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I do understand this also, that as you get older, you know, your fangs dull, your teeth dull. You know, I I, I, I used to go every, every, uh, Sunday to Nation of Islam Temple Services here in Baltimore, Maryland, 25 years ago. You know, I was always there. You know what I mean? Um, you know, 
front I was a front row seater sitter. You know what I'm saying? Um so you know what I mean? I know that the Farrakhan twenty five years ago was spitting pure fire. Pure fire. The cracker was the cracker, the white man was the devil, and and they was our motherfucking nature, our natural adversary. You know what I'm saying? Since the Garden of Eden. You know, that's the that's the nation that I come up under. That's the that Farrakhan that I know and love. You know what I mean? In spite of, how you doing, brother? In spite of, you know what I mean? His association with the death of, of uh, Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? The brother redeemed himself because when he took over as leader of the nation, you know what I'm saying? He did a good job at first. You know what I mean? He was, he was, he was staying on course. The nation was the motherfucking nation. And when he pulled off the Million Man March, this is when shit started going south. Okay, because it was the it was at first the, the white people knew he was he was threatening and all that shit and that his speech was harsh. All right. But they never really they re they never really feared him or nothing like that. OK. They never really took him. Uh, he was talking shit about the white man, the devil, that said never going on Donahue. They wasn't giving him hardly no TV time. And when they was getting them TV time, they made sure it was always two or three crackers versus one. OK. And that's how they throw down. All right. But the brother was wise enough and smart enough, and he held his own against the adversary. You know, even with two and three against him, the brother held his own. He proved himself. He had been tried, tested, and proven to be effective as a leader. You know what I mean? And so I had respect for the brother. Okay? And when the brother got a million plus niggas in Washington, D.C., and they had to shut Congress down, the president split, Congress split, the Senate split, the House of Representatives split, all the motherfuckers split. They, they all left D.C., okay? And like Steve Copey said, he did that under the just the call for atonement alone. And what if it had been payback on the cracker? You know what I'm saying? You had motherfuckers who came from as far as L.A., Washington State, up in Seattle, niggas was coming. Niggas was coming as far south as Texas. You know what I mean? Uh, niggas was coming as far north as Chicago, Milwaukee. You know what I mean? Michigan, okay? So... You know, niggas was coming from Florida, all right? You know, they was coming from, from the four corners of the earth, you know what I'm saying, on the call of this man. But he did it right. He, 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 he promoted it for about six months, you know what I mean? I remember seeing the posters and flyers up like six months in advance. So it was, it was organized, it was done, it was, it was promoted well, and, it, and, you know, it was prepared well. Therefore, you know what I mean? You got a good response out of it, okay? But when he did that shit, that's when the crackers and the Jews mainly called them in for a sit down. That's when they knew, you know what I'm saying? We can't be against this nigga. We got to call him in for a sit down. We got to make him the offer. It's like when Jesus fasted for 40 days. What happened? The devil knew he was weak. So what did the devil do? He took advantage of it. And that's when he, he said, let me go tempt Yahshua. You know what I mean? And the first offer he made to him was knowing that he, he was weak and hadn't eaten was, hey, won't you turn these stones into bread? You know, he knew Yahshua was hungry, but Yahshua, you know what I mean? He was up on us. He was sharp. Like I said, you got to be sharp. Yahshua told him, you know, man must not live off of bread alone, but from the very word that comes out of God's mouth. You know what I mean? Live off of the scripture as well. It will feed the soul, not just the body. You know what I mean? So the devil next 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 offer was uh for for Yahshua to cast himself off the top of the temple. You know what I mean? It's and told them, you know, it said that the angels will, you know, bear you up. You know, they they will keep you from dying and falling. You know, and Yahshua had a nice answer for him as well. It is not right to tempt the Lord thy God. You know what I mean? So then next the devil says this. He pulls out the big card. Check this out. Just pay me a little teeny bit of homage. Okay, just a little bit. Just get down on your knees. You know what I mean? Just get down on your knees in front of me right now. And, you know, pay me a little homage. That's all. All I want is just a little bit respect. Just a little bit, you know? 
and I will give you all that your eyes behold. I will make you the king of the earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he hit him with then. And Yahshua, you know, told them, get from, 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 get from, from my face, you serpent, you Satan. You know what I mean? Get behind me, you devil. You know what I mean? Put him in his place like Brother Collett would, you know? So, okay. That happens. Yeshua passed the test. All right? Farrakhan gets called in for the sit down. And I can imagine what kind of offers was made to that man. But this nigga, he bit. Because the Farrakhan, after the Million Man March, they took the fangs off him. They took some flies and yanked them motherfuckers out. And he, he did it himself, pulled his own teeth out and passed it over for some bread. Because one thing for sure, two things for certain about Farrakhan, he loves money. He loves money, man. Don't you ever forget that shit. Well, listen, I personally, I personally, this is just a Yahoo else uh, 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 opinion, okay? I personally feel as though Farrakhan, with all the money that the nation take in, he just made the nation into a religious slash corporation. You know, you got them niggas on the streets selling them pies and them papers. You know what I'm saying? Um, and all the advertisement and the products that he sell through in the papers. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, he allowed people to buy advertisements space, you know, certain people or whatever. You know what I mean? And then as far as like, you know, at one time he had the uh, FOI doing security work and shit like that. I did not, I did not see the money back on the street in the form of any goddamn thing. Any goddamn thing. We saw the money making pot that they was indulged in, but what was the money actually doing? You know what I'm saying? It, and, I, and don't don't you dare reply. Don't try to reply. Well, they did this, they did that, and they did that. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough and it wasn't for the people. You understand what I'm saying? With, with the millions and millions. We, we talking billions now. We talking billions. Billions, okay, that then came through Farrakhan's hand, and I personally ain't never seen nothing serious ever done. You know what I mean? You know, uh, he, he, everybody told the nigga not to. He after the Million Man March, you know, he did great with that shit, and he was supposed to follow that motherfucker with something serious. Instead, he started doing this Africa shit. You know what I mean? And he lost it. He lost the support of the people. That he had because he had brought in Christians, he had brought in Hebrews, he had brought in atheists all to uh Washington on that million man march. So he had crossed, you know what I mean, uh denominational uh uh division. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no preacher has ever done that shit except Martin. You know what I mean? Martin was the last one to do that. So 25 years later, you had that shit happen, and you know. His follow-up was bullshit. And every follow-up after that follow-up was bullshit. You guys, forgive me. My medicine drives my mouth out. My blood pressure medicine. Um, so, you know. Uh, let me find my chaps. So, that's basically, you know, how that whole thing went down with Jericho. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's, 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 it's. He had he had several sit downs with the ADF, the Anti Defamation League. What the fuck is you having sit down? He's admitted on camera. I've seen interviews where he talk about going to Jews' homes and shit, going to some Jewish people's homes. The head of the, the you know, and don't think that these average fucking Jewish people. No, 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 no. These are motherfucking Jewish people who rule and run some shit, who have power. Power recognizes power, and power invites power to, to their home. You know, don't think that me or you get no goddamn invite to no goddamn, you know, Jews that run the world homes. You know, so he admitted that shit himself. I've seen him say that shit on camera about going to some of these, uh, you know, Jews' homes and shit like that. You know, he there playing, he bringing his violin you know, entertaining these motherfuckers. Man, fuck all that bullshit. Straight up. Straight up, y'all. And 
And I don't know why I fucking so hard for some of y'all to believe, man, because y'all seen he had a part in that shit with Malcolm, yo. And he fucking turned his back on Khaled, yo. That's when he really fucked up, yo. If he didn't fuck up with the with the with not following up with the million man march like he's supposed to, yo, yo, that nigga fucked up bad, yo. When he turned his back on Khaled, yo, straight up. Yo, Khaled, yo, would have gave his life for that man, yo. Nobody love Farrakhan. Khaled love that nigga like his wife love that nigga, yo. And, and maybe even more, shit. Khaled love, love the minister, yo. Straight up, yo. He love the minister like Malcolm loved the messenger, yo. And when, and when Farrakhan turned his back on Khaled Muhammad, yo, this is, this is when Congress, fucking Congress, had a session just to come up, just to draw legislation and pass a bill to ban uh, Khaled from speaking and saying certain shit. And if he was to say certain shit, they could arrest his ass. You know, they did all that shit to Khaled. And Farrakhan turned his fucking back on him, yo. You know what I mean? Turned his back on him. And now Farrakhan and joined up with L. Ron Hubbard, this cracker motherfucker. And they, and they say that he got the cracker picture in Mars Merriam up in Chicago in the motherfucking mosque. They say L. Ron Hubbard picture on the wall. Yo, that's some crazy shit. That's some crazy shit. So... In my opinion, I'm going to say it. Fuck Farrakhan. All that motherfucking money, that nigga, that nigga done made billions over the last 25 years. He made billions. And you don't see Nation out here doing shit. He got them niggas out on that motherfucking corner selling them papers and them, and them pies, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. That nigga, man, that nigga ain't right. That nigga ain't right, yo. Yo, that nigga ain't right. So, you know, I just want to make my motherfucking position clear. You know what I mean? On that Farrakhan shit. Straight like that. Alright, sister.